Hi everyone. Welcome to this revision lesson. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm late today. I had some work to do. So that's why I set up my stuff at this time. I hope that we'll be able to finish our lesson. All right, there have been some changes. We are not doing any assessment this week. We are continuing with our lessons. Um, so let's go. Right, we are revising the impact of technology on society and the environment. We are going to look at uh, different materials for bags, shopping bags, recycling of paper. We are going to look at the process of recycling of paper. Right, um, we are going to look for the project. We are going to look at the project for term two. We know that um, because of social distancing and these COVID regulations, we don't do the project, but I'm going to teach you the content that relates to the project because that is time to knowledge that you must have. So that is what you are going to cover today. Right, uh, we know that we have different materials for bags. So um, we are going to explore that. We're going to look at paper bags, plastic bags, leather bags. So here, this table answers the question, what will happen to the bag when it gets wet. So when you look at the paper bag, it gets soggy and it falls apart, as you know. The plastic bag, it gets wet, but nothing happens to it. The leather bag, it gets wet, and if not dried carefully, it can get hard and unusable. So that's the reaction of uh, the different materials that bags are made of, the reaction to water. Okay, that's very clear. Now we're going to look also at different materials for bags, answering the question, do you need to care for the bag in some way so that it will last longer? Because we are fighting what you call consumerism, which is a habit of just buying things unnecessarily, all right? So we are looking at how can we maybe avoid buying paper bags or shopping bags at all times? Is there a way that we can care for the bag so that you can reuse? Remember that cycle? Reuse, reduce, recycle. So that is what you're looking into. Right, the paper bag, there isn't anything you can do except to be careful it doesn't tear or get wet, okay? Then if you do that, you can, use, you can reuse the paper bag. The plastic bag, it will last as long as you don't place it near heat, it will, uh, which will melt it. If it is in the sun too long, it will lose its shape. Okay, the leather bag, you can put special cream, dabbing on a leather bag, it will keep it soft and preserve it for years. It also helps to make the leather waterproof. So instead of always buying paper bags, shopping bags, which end up causing pollution, we can take care of the bags that we have. That includes the paper bag, the plastic bag, and the leather bag, all right? That's quite simple. Right, different materials for bags. Answer the question, can the bag be fixed when it breaks? If yes, then how? The paper bag? Um, it can be fixed with sticky tape or glue. <laughs> I wonder who do that. Plastic bag, it can be fixed with plastic cement, a type of glue that sticks plastic together, or it can be taped with strong tape, right? That sounds very ridiculous, but it's, it's ways of fixing these bags. The leather bag, it can be sewn together, or a special all-purpose glue can be used. Uh, I want to draw your, uh, your attention to, 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 to plastic welding. I know for now we are talking about bags, but um, um, I, I once broke um, a wiper of my hired car 
and I had to take it to, 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 to plastic welding. So instead of breaking plastic things, and um, you know, if I didn't know there was plastic welding, I would just take it out and dump it. But now we do have advanced technology, we can weld plastic. So I fixed my wiper, it was, it was okay. So you can fix plastic. Now we're talking about bags, but practically, you know, plastics have different classes. There are classes of plastic or types of plastic that you can fix instead of just throwing them away. So you can fix it and continue to use it. All right, that applies to specific types of plastics though. Right, the, um, the leather bag, it can be sewn together. So this is just to show you that you can, you can reuse uh, materials instead of dumping. Okay, what will happen to the bag if it is thrown away with other waste like rotting food? Where will the bag end up? We must think about such things when we want to, dis to dispose of materials. Where will they end up? What will happen to it there? Let's look at the paper bag. It will turn into compost, all right? Because paper is made from plant material. So when it, uh, um, when it, it is biodegradable, okay? Plastic bag, nothing will happen. So that's the issue. Leather bag, it will eventually biodegrade, eventually, you know, after a long time. So the plastic bag is the problem. Nothing will happen to it. So it will just contribute to, 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 to polluting waste, all right? The negative impact of shopping bags on people and the environment. What can happen if an animal eats plastic bag? Let's talk. What can happen? What can happen? I know some of you live in, in very urban areas, so maybe you're not exposed to livestock. But, you know, learning from science, what do you think can happen to animals when they eat plastic bags? Where's my grade eight today? All right, okay. This is what will happen to an animal when it eats plastic bags. We have wild animals that you have to save out there in the wild. We have domestic animals, livestock. When they get exposed to these plastic bags, they choke. The cows, the sheep, you know, animals on the farm, they choke. It can choke the animal by blocking its windpipe or the plastic bag can get stuck in the animal's throat and kill it slowly because it can swallow food. It can't swallow food or water. So this plastic bag will, will create some obstruction in the animal's digestive or respiratory tract. So it's not good. If the animal manages to swallow the bag, the plastic can jam up its digestive system, which can, could also kill it. You know, farmers, they struggle a lot with their livestock eating plastic. Okay, what happens to people and animals who breathe in the smoke and gases which comes from burning plastic? Sometimes you want to burn your, 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 your rubbish heap at home. Or in the dumping area, they want to burn all the, 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 the rubbish that's been dumped there. Smoke is toxic, it's poisonous and can cause serious health problems in people and animals who breathe in the smoke. These problems are sometimes immediate and sometimes slow, but they will always result from breathing in the poison. Hmm? Sometimes people get allergic reactions and they don't know where they get these allergic reactions. And Yes, Asanda, the plastic can prevent food digestion and uh, prevent, uh, it, it can cause, actually, cause slow or painful death, okay? They will choke and die, Natalie. Yes, 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 you're right. So, um, even us people, we, we, we react to this uh, um, air pollution. 
that you're exposed to. You know, people get allergic, they get asthmatic, they get respiratory check diseases. So some of these, they come from the smoke that comes from burning plastic. Where do the smoke and gases go after the fire has burned? Into the atmosphere, that's the answer. It goes into the atmosphere. What stays behind on the ground after the plastic was burnt? Mm -hmm. The heavy particles, where do the smoke and gases go? The heavy particles can combine with the rain, mm -hmm. causing acid rain. In South Africa, we are not used to. It, 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 yeah, it forms ashes, and slightly ashes, you know, it's, um, it, it um, spoils the view of the environment, you know. It affects how the environment looks, all these uh, burnt ashes. And more importantly, the heavy particles can combine with rain, causing acid rain. You know, at my age, and I'm very old, I'm such a very, very old teacher, I've never seen acid rain. But, um, Shay, Madam, does it leave toxic substances? Yes, the toxic substances, the, 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 the toxic particles, Shay, you know, when a form, um, formation of clouds, condensation is taking place, condensation takes place with these um, um, toxic particles, and that is what causes acid rain. So in South Africa, South Africa is such a beautiful country. We're not exposed to acid rain. I've never heard this ever been, in, um, but you can research that if we've ever had acid rain. But in some countries like the UK, they do have acid rain. So can you imagine our beautiful houses and our beautiful trees being exposed to acid rain? That's quite bad. And acid rain is caused by uh, industrialization. If the place has a lot of industries and they emit these um, carbon monoxide into the atmosphere, then formation of clouds takes place with that and then it causes acid rain. All right. What stays behind on the ground after the plastic was burnt? You answered that one, okay? The leftover material that hasn't been destroyed by the fire. This is still toxic and will last for many hundreds of years. You know, plastic drips. It drips. When you burn plastic, it has that drip, dripping effect. Still, still that will be lying on the ground, you know, to be lying in the environment for the next many, many, many years. Let's see. Madam, does it leave? Yes, I, I answered that. But what would happen if there were acid rain? Acid rain. Ooh, how would we look, Lisedi? Acid rain is bad. If we, if we had acid rain, I think our scientists would warn us that um, there would be acid rain. Then we would have to stay indoors and not go out because it would burn our hair, it would burn our skins, and it would look ugly, you know? Yeah, it, re it releases acids, yeah. So you don't want to be exposed to those acids. And even the plants die. Our cars, how could our cars be exposed to acid rain? Just imagine you buy an expensive car, then it is exposed to acid rain, which would be terrible. It would spoil the look of everything, all right? So we don't want that. If you want to avoid that, we have to take care of the things that we use, especially the plastics, all right? Okay. What does it look like when there are lots of plastic bags lying around? your house or school or in the street, or in the field. Mm -hmm. The effects of pollution and how unsightly it is in the community, apart from the health and environmental risks posed. You know, would you like that kind of environment? Would it be beautiful? What do you think? That is what we call littering, when people just throw rubbish. Mm -hmm. It would be ugly. 
it would be ugly. So this is a picture that I've shared with you before. This polluted river, you can see all sorts of rubbish being dumped into this river. And as we said, river, the river is home to many animals, right? Many creatures. So people clean up their homes and they go and dump in the homes of these poor animals. What can happen when plastic ends up in a river or a stream? Let's talk. What can happen? Hmm? It can block, block up water pipes. It can be swallowed by animals drinking water. It can trap other litter like this. This has trapped, you know, these logs has trapped more litter. You can see plastic bottles there, polystyrene. Uh, that's another form of a plastic and all this waste, okay? Causing streams to become polluted. It can pose health threats by creating stagnant pools that breed mosquitoes, malaria. Hmm? The water quality will also deteriorate in these pools. So you wouldn't want to draw water from this, from this stream because obviously it is poisonous, it is polluted. So people, it is people who do these things, right? What happens to plastic if it lies in water for a long time? Does it change? What do you think? Does plastic change if it lies in water? It won't change. Plastic is, is such a problem. It will stay like that for years and years. And um, it does not biodegrade, it just gets dirtier and uglier, all right? Just imagine we have tourists who come and visit our country and they find our country so dirty, but when you go to them, when you go overseas, we see beautiful places. And when they come to our home, to South Africa, they find such rivers. We see we have a beautiful country, so we have to uh, act responsibly, think for our country. All right. Now, um, when you use paper and cardboard without recycling it, remember you can, we said paper is biodegradable, but people don't want to recycle it. If you don't recycle it, what happens? Let's look at this. It's a cycle. Uh, cutting down trees, transporting the timber, it goes there to a paper making or cardboard uh, uh, making factory. Surely you have seen these trucks which carry loads of logs harvested from, fo fo from forests. All right. So there in the factory, uh, paper is made and cardboard is made. Then it goes to our homes, to our schools, to our churches. Uh, there's a hall, you know, it, it comes to us, we use it. And then there's a truck probably carrying um, a waste material to the dump. Then it is dumped. It is not recycled. What do you think about this? How do we know? You can check on the internet. If you want to know what overseas looks like, it's very cheap, it's cheaper than traveling over there. All right. Okay, men, but they go to the good places, yes, yes. We also want our tourists to come and see our good places, but we still spoil even our good places. Hmm? Hakim? <laughs> if you want to see overseas Hakim, check on Google, thou shalt Google it. Asanda, but yes, there is a documentary about South Africa from overseas. They only literally showed pics of rural areas and spoke about our poverty. Oh, what a shame, Asanda, what a shame. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, we have some beautiful places to show off, we do. But still, you find that some of us, we visit those places as locals and we just trash them up. So that's not good. 
we must take care of the things that we use, okay, to preserve the beauty of our country. Let's say the not are good qualities. Yeah, we should behave. We must not be known for the bad things, all the pollution and the crime. So we must act responsibly every time. We must act responsibly. So that's one illustration of irresponsible dumping, if I may say so, responsible dumping. Now this one is using paper and cardboard and, and recycling it. Okay, did you know the average person uses almost 50 kilograms of paper and cardboard per year? Right? Now, poisonous chlorine gas is used to bleach paper. To bleach means to make white. The chlorine can form poisonous gas gases called dioxins, which can be released into the atmosphere. Okay, we use paper. And when we do recycle it, we bleach it. I'm going to, I want to quickly share with you the, play and the, the recycling process. So we, we have an option. You see from the rubbish dump there, we can make money. That bag is a bag of money. We can um, recycle it, okay? Recycling it does give us money. What are paper and cardboard made of? A paper recycling factory make, makes new paper or cardboard from waste paper. The way this is done is explained below. It can also make, you can also make recycled paper at home, all right? Waste paper is mixed with warm water and chemicals. This, what is this? Who can tell me what this is? You have this in your kitchen, some of you. Mm -hmm. It's a blender. You can recycle paper at home using your blender. Yes, you know it. You make your smoothie with this, all right? You can make a paper smoothie, right? Okay. And then after blending it, it is put through the sieve, okay? The old glue and fibers that are, 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 are very short pass through the sieve, okay? Long, strong fibers remain on top. These fibers then go to a steel tank where chemicals are added to remove ink from the pulp. The new glue, new glue is added to the pulp. Some clay is also added if the pa recycled paper will be used for writing or printing because uh, the clay gives the paper a smoother surface, like those magazine pages that you see. All right. That is some glue. Yes. <laughs> paper smoothie. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. The pulp goes to a paper making machine where it is pressed between two rollers to give it a required thickness and to squeeze out water. Instead of waiting a long time for the paper to dry, it is dried more quickly by heating it and blowing hot air over it. Once the paper is dry, it's cut into the necessary size and packaged. Now that is the basic, now I'm just giving you the principle of the of the whole process right i hope we can open this video quickly Let's see.
All right. So that was the paper making process. I hope that you, you did see how you make your 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 <laughs> you have your 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 paper smoothie there. All right. Surely you have seen some papers like this. It sells in some arts and crafts shops. Uh, where you make you, you buy some uh, card material, uh, some beautiful cards made from recycled paper. Okay, so this is this is what you do to re to recycle your own paper. Okay. Now, this is the industrial process of recycling paper. Paper fibers can be recycled as many as seven times, but each time it is recycled, the fiber fibers get broken into shorter and shorter fibers. If it is recycled too many times, the fibers become too short and weak to use for paper, uh, for making paper again. So you can only recycle paper how many times? <laughs> Asanda, you must tell your mom that your teacher, your technology teacher taught you how to make your own paper, right? Now, you can only recycle paper only seven times, as many as seven times, not more than that, okay? So this is the industrial, what, the video that you just saw is your home, your home recycling process, okay? I guess your, your mother has to buy you uh, maybe your own blender <laughs> because I will also uh, shout as a mother if my children are playing with my blender doing that. Froth flotation. Uh, oh, you saw that uh, a froth, like a floating uh, in, in that blender. Yes, yes, that's what it, use. it uses. Then you compress that. Then when you compress that, you extract the water and you let it dry. But in the industries, they use heating. They heat it up to dry, all right? Now let's look at the process, the industrial process of recycling paper. Okay, you have to, surely you have seen these people who flatten the cardboards. There's a, a, a specific way of flattening cardboards. All right, you, you look for the edges, then you, you flatten it up. Then there, there's the process, right? A, now, the process of recycling starts with sorting the paper. You have to sort the different types of paper. It can be done at home or at a recycling center. The paper is sorted by removing any contaminants like plastic, metal, or other trash. You know, with the packaging paper, you have those um, heavy duty staplers that uh, we use for sealing. Now, you have to remove that before the recycling. That is the like your chip the chips, papers, pizza boxes, and everything. Then to transporting, the papers are then tied and transported to warehouses for storage. From there, they are transferred to the palpa. I hope you can hear me because now my computer is reporting that my, 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 my internet is unstable. Palping, the palpa is a large vet that has chemicals and water. The paper is chopped up into tiny pieces, then heated in the vet. It, uh, this turns the cellulose fibers into mush, like the one that you saw in, in, the, in the blender, right? From there, the fourth stage is screening. The mushy pulp is then screened. Basically, the pulp is pushed 
through the screens that have holes and slots like that sieve. You saw is that sieve that we used for the domestic recycling? Yes, just something like that. But we call it screening in the industry, right? Cleaning, um, they, 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 they remove further heavy objects, okay? They are thrown from the cylindrical cone-shaped vats while lighter particles gather in the center where it is safely removed. Then, remember this um, paper was printed before, ne? so there's a process called de-inking, right? After this, uh, depending on the paper, the pulp might go through the de-inking phase. This process removes printing ink. Maybe it is uh, newspapers, you know, it was printed before, so the ink has to be removed. Then after de-inking, there is washing, right? So the process of removing ink also uh, includes washing, okay? Right, the washing stage in involves rinsing pulp with water to remove the ink particles. However, larger and sticky particles might need flotation process. That's what you talked about, ne? Flotation process. For, the, for this, the pulp is put in a floating vat in which air and chemicals known as surfactants are added, are added so that it comes to the surface, right? Ink and other particles attach themselves to air particles, float to the surface where they are removed as scum. Um, like in the, the scum that you get in your bath when you're bathing, right? So it's a process like that because the scum floats on your water. Yeah. Then the ninth stage is bleaching. Okay. Bleaching. Um, the paper is then treated further to separate all the color particles from the mash. Uh, they add bleach. Right. After this, if the white paper is going to be made, then hydrogen peroxide. That's the stuff that you made from oxygen and chlorine dioxide is used to bleach it. If cardboard is to be made, then the pulp is not bleached. So for your white paper, there's more bleaching done. Then rolling, like you saw in that domestic recycling process, there is where you compress. So the compression in the industry is done through rolling. The pulp is then sprayed into wire screens which drains the water and bonds the recycled fibers to form a watery, a watery paper sheet. This watery sheet is then pressed through a number of press rollers to remove all the water. Then it is dried using heated metal rollers and wound into a giant roll. Each roll can be as wide as 30 feet and weight as much as 20 tons. Recycled paper is ready. Then it will be cut into different sizes. You have your standard sizes of paper. You have your A5, your A4, your A3, right to the different sizes. Then it is cut out for, for us to use. So, you know, I think you have learned from, this, from today's lesson that you have to collect your waste paper. Don't just uh, burn it or just throw it, throw it around. You must pack it up for recycling, and it does save our environment. I hope you benefited from this. Thank you very much. Do look at the, the steps of recycling paper and the, the, the industrial one, and then also look at the domestic one. I hope <laughs> you get some luck with your mothers at home with their, with their blenders. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye. <laughs>